Hello, Active Sage here on the Sage Show. And an update came out today that did something that, well, I'm sure you'll notice the second you boot up the game. That's right, they've redone the textures for heavy armor and light armor. Now, the pattern is completely the same, or at least very similar. There's some of the interesting little designs that already exist, except for now it's much tighter, much less blurry. You can go up to it and you see some little dints and details, and I absolutely adore actually these seams now, the way they're sort of indented in the normal map to make them actually look like they're pushed in and little bolts and all that. It's very, very nice. I like them a whole lot and it's a wonderful touch to the game. Now another thing you'll probably notice really quickly if you were to press G is over here next to your gravity generator just below it, there was a spherical gravity generator. Now, spherical gravity generator does exactly what it says. It is a gravity generator that looks like such. You cannot rotate it any other way besides around the base. And you place it down, and now stuff is being pulled towards it. Now, I'm still not exactly falling because, of course, there's another gravity generator that's just a normal one on this station. But as you can see, as I walk around it, we get some ridiculousness here because, of course, we're being pulled towards it as well. And, of course, if we were to go ahead and press K on its control panel, you can see it has controls for its radius, so you can see at how far away it reaches stuff and uh well as you increase and decrease those different powers it actually uses more power so you can see current input is zero because it's requiring probably that 44.8 megawatts and while well, the current small reactor on the station couldn't quite output it but you can see there if we lower it back down it works so what we did when we upped it to that is we're actually overloading power and also you can go ahead and instead of setting this to pull you can set it to push away and that while taking the acceleration here which changes the amount of gravity and so you gotta bring it all the way over here so now we're being pushed away from it and because we have that other gravity generator now we sort of well, we fall in a different way towards it it's pretty cool also you can do alt shift f12 that's alt shift f12 pressing all three buttons at once starting in that order and you'll get these little things that show up everywhere. This is the same as this has always been in the game. It shows collision volumes and other volumes. And this is basically showing us that this big sphere that you can sort of see is around here. That's actually the gravity field of that little generator that I just stuck in. And of course the main idea behind a spherical gravity generator is that if I can get back over to it, we can go ahead and shut this one off. That way we can show you another one I've gone ahead and stuck inside this asteroid. And you see there for a half a second you can see it. It's because if you cannot have direct line of sight on it through an asteroid, sometimes it doesn't actually show you the field. But Alt Shift F12, I'm going to get rid of that. This asteroid does have a gravity generator right in the center of it. So if we fly over to it, you can see we can now walk around the edges of it. In fact, we could walk all the way around this thing if we please, as long as we don't come into any high mountains or anything. And you can see I'm basically able to keep going over it. So using custom asteroids from the workshop, you can basically make yourself little planets or planetoids of some sort. Uh, that's a bit scary to fall that far. And anyway, as I just said, the very center of this asteroid if I go into F8 spectator mode, you can see I have a spherical gravity generator just stuck right in there. Pretty cool. Now, to properly demonstrate another feature of the gravity generator that I showed a second ago that just made us fall the other way, I've gone ahead and created this little thing over here. Yeah, let me just find it. It should be around the edge. There it is. This strange looking thing. And it has a spherical gravity generator right in the center of it. And I'm going to go ahead and tweak the settings to show you how it works. It's actually pretty awesome. So let's go ahead and hop in this control seat right there, and we're actually going to do a F7 to get our camera near our character, F8, put it in proper spectator, that way we can see what we're doing, and then F9 so we still have control of the buttons at the bottom of the screen. And now I'm going to press 1, and I have a thing that's going to start spitting materials out. And as you can see, the little rocks are falling into this area, pretty cool, and as they fall, they're of course being drawn directly to this, so instead of like a normal gravity generator where they would fall and then fall down there, they're of course still being pulled to it even after they go around the side which is pretty dang awesome. I'm loving it. Now, we're going to let this go for a second, or actually we could go ahead and just do this. You can see I got two more buttons down there at the bottom of my screen. The other one reverses the direction. So if I was to press K right now, while having F9 mode, you can see that the spherical gravity generator, when I'm pressing that button, it's slowly re lowering the amount of gravity that the generator is creating. So now when they fall, you can see they're falling very, very slowly. But if I was to go ahead and keep lowering it, so let's go back to the spherical gravity generator and lower it to that point. Well, now it's pushing stuff away from it. So now I can actually push and pull stuff away depending on how it's working. So now I've set it back to pushing away again. So all these rocks are being pushed against the wall. If I was actually to go to F8 mode now and look up the ceiling, you see it's stopped putting them out because it's clogged up. But if we go ahead and tell these to start pulling towards again, 
any second now they'll all be pulled towards the middle and you see we're being pulled towards the middle very slowly and I've just reversed it part way there and start pulling towards the middle again and push away again push away again some very interesting stuff and you see there sometimes it gets for a very second once right in the middle it turns off it goes red that's because it's at the exact zero point it's not pushing them away it's not pulling them towards it it's pretty dang awesome you can create some interesting things with all this and you see there <laughs> Of course, they're all being pulled down to the middle. And there's a little one over here who, in a way, he's now orbiting around it, which is pretty awesome. Let's go ahead and just mess with this a little bit more, because it's pretty cool. And while I do that, I'll go ahead and explain some other things that they've just done today. Now, another thing that they did was they added LOD support for models, for custom models to be exact, and they probably might use them on their own if they end up with high poly stuff. Now, what that is, is level of detail, which means usually in games, the farther away something gets, the less polygons it has because they swap out the models. So right now, if I'm right next to this, you can see that these are pretty, well, they can count the polygons. You can see they're a bit blocky in the roundness, but what you could do with le level of detail is have a super smooth round bit there. So instead of it being blocky, it'll be perfectly round pretty much. But as you get farther away, you wouldn't be able to tell that they have that, that many polygons. You don't need that many. So what it does is it takes out the model that you would have had up close with all those polygons to make it look smooth. And it'll load in a new one with fewer polygons. And the farther away you get, the more times it'll swap the model out until it reaches a very basic version of the model that just has the colors and the basic silhouette of the object. So they've added the support for that in mods, which is very, very useful, and which means people can, uh, well, once I get it done, stop telling me my models are causing lag in their games, because, well, I'm sorry about that. I didn't, I don't intend to cause lag in your games. And this thing doesn't seem to be pulling stuff towards it anymore. I'm fearful that the very outer edges, oh, there we go, nope, it's working again. <laughs> yeah, fair few. Okay. Yeah, so I'm not sure I'll redo all my models to have LOD, but I definitely will from this point on try to make sure all of my models have level of details on them. That way I'm not lagging people's stuff because I, well, even though it's annoying to hear that, I also feel terrible because I don't want to cause lag for people's games. Very sorry about that. So hopefully in the future I'll be able to have good LODs for everything. So while this altered version goes ahead and continues spitting out rocks, I'm going to go ahead and actually read through the patch notes. Uh, because there's a few things I haven't shown here. Now, one of the main things is prefab respawn ships. Basically, respawn ships are a file called prefab, and when they spawn, it's basically loading in that file. Well, now you can make your own. On your keyboard, if you press F11, there's all this stuff that pops up at the right. I'd like to demonstrate it, but currently it's not working for me for some reason. It might be a bug. I'm sure they'll fix it soon, but the point is, if you do control C on an object, and then press the F11 button, there's going to be a bunch of stuff on the top right of your screen, or actually on the whole right of your screen. There's a copy, or a save clipboard to file button there. And it basically saves your prefabs. It saves what you have copied as a prefab, I mean. So you can basically mod that in to have like a respawn ship. Also, they've added more respawn ships and they've changed some other little things, mainly to do with pistons, landing gears, and rotors. So all that stuff in the past, especially after the last update, rotors had a ter or landing gears had a terrible habit of going kaboom. They've now been changed, so they're not gonna do that. They've also fixed some issues with that stuff in multiplayer specifically, which was where we were getting it anyway. Uh, and what else have they done? They've fixed two large piston collision model, so apparently it was too large. Uh, fixed an issue when loose blocks losing ownership. Fixed death and survival disabling chat window, which sounds terrible if you're not talking to your friends on TeamSpeak or Skype or something, dying and suddenly losing chat. That is terrifying. Fixed toolbar not remembering functionality from attachments important. Fixed hotkey groups resetting when using merge blocks. Sounds like a nightmare. Fixed wrong value in Steam ID on dedicated server. Fixed problem with character mods deforming hands or legs of astronauts. I didn't personally experience that. Well, not in a long time, but I have seen it in the past and it was terrifying. Glad they got that fixed. And fixed graphic glitch when doors were inside of other blocks. Oh, and one more. Fixed inertia. Uh, not preserved when blocks was unmerged. So I guess uh, if you had two ships going at max speed and you unmerged them suddenly, they might both stop. 
I can imagine you splattering on a wall quite quickly like that, or maybe you want to keep work going and destroy the other one. Quite terrifying. Anyway, that's a list of fixes. You can see all the update notes and fixes down below in the description. There will also be a link to the official patch notes page. If you click on that, you can see any hot fixes they do listed there as well, probably. It's pretty cool. Anyway, thanks so much for watching, guys. I hope this was interesting and informational, and uh, I'll see you next time.